Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Shannon. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. Well, today I wanted to talk to you. Wait, before I get started, I gotta say, I am trying these new magnetic lashes that one of my clients told me about. They said I had to get them. And I feel like I have a caterpillar on top of my, my eyelid. So listen, I might you might see me snatch these things off. But anyway, if I got, uh-uh, see, uh, I can already feel it move. I'm going to have to end up snatching it off at some point. But anyway, I wanted to talk about navigating successfully seasons of isolation in wilderness. And that is one thing. If you are alive, you are going to have to deal with this, especially if you are a believer because what I had to learn when I would go through seasons like this previously was learn, listen this is just part of the journey this is something that Jesus went through this is something that other people go through you are going to have to go through this and I would really really give myself I would make the seasons worse by questioning all of these things but now I know don't question it. Go through the season. Get through it successfully. And I want to give you guys several points on how to get through the season successfully. And why am I saying this? Because anytime you know what to prepare for and you know what to do, it makes a hard season so much easier. You know, we see this in the world. We see this in the natural. Even when people like um, athletes, like boxers or whatnot, get in the ring, one of the things that they always do is study their opponent. They want to know the opponent's moves. They want to know the opponent's um, tactics so that they can do everything they can to uh, stop it, to contradict it, to block it, to uh, work against their opponent having the upper hand. So when you're prepared, you know how to deal better with the situation. You know how to navigate it more successfully. And that is what I am going to be talking about today. The first thing that I wanted to share that I think is so important is not only did you not do something wrong, but the Lord has deemed you capable and worthy. You're ready and you're worthy to get the promotion that he has for you if you are going through one of those seasons. Now, you have to get through it successfully, but based on where you are in your life, what you have learned in your life, your character, your all of this other stuff, he has deemed you ready to be tested in those areas so that you can be promoted. And so, you know, perspective is so important and such a huge factor in us being able to navigate through things. And knowing that he deems you ready for the test is really a wonderful thing. Now, again, I'm gonna be talking about how to navigate successfully, but know that you have not done anything wrong necessarily. You're not, you know, um, God is not mad at you, all of this other stuff that the enemy might want you to um, think, that is not the case. So the first thing that you have to do, and this is going to seem obvious, but draw closer to God. And I'm starting off with that one thing because you need a uh, anointing of God. You need the leading of God through this season. And so drawing close to him, whether or not that's fasting, whether or not that's praying. And when I mean praying, I mean also praying in the spirit, whether or not that is reading the word more, all of those different things, you want to make sure that you incorporate. Now, when you're praying and you know how you've gotten your heavenly language, first and foremost, make sure that you are Praying in the spirit, because when you pray in the spirit, the Bible says that we are building, that we are enlarging, that we are strengthening our inner man, our inner spirit. And so when you're in seasons like this, you want to be strengthened. You want your inner spirit to be rock solid. You want that thing to be unmovable. And so strengthen your inner man if you have your spiritual language. The second the second thing that I wanted to share in these seasons of isolation and wilderness is know that the enemy is coming. He is coming. So don't be surprised when he comes. Expect it. Okay, that's number one. Number two is to be filled with truth. 
And what is the truth? It's the word of God. Jesus, obviously, in the scripture, was filled with truth. This, I mean, the Bible says he was the truth. So not only was he filled with the truth, he was the truth, he spoke the truth, and that's exactly how he handled the enemy. You have to know the truth so that when the enemy comes and the lies, because, you know, the enemy operates through lies, just like he did with Jesus, you know, the uh, enemy will always try to lure you in through lies and through other tactics that are not according to the word of God. And he will tweak things ever so slightly. And he will twist the word ever so slightly to try to manipulate you, to try to deceive you, to try to get you to do what he wants you to do. So that is important to know the word of God, because as we see in Luke, I believe it's Luke 7, Jesus spoke back to the enemy and he spoke back the truth of God. And that leads me to my next point. Jesus spoke the truth of God. He shut the enemy down by speaking the truth of God, but he did not have a discussion with the enemy. And in Luke 4, it, I think I mentioned Luke 7, but in Luke 4, it's very clear that Jesus shuts the enemy down. And that's what we have to do. Listen, if Jesus is our preeminent example, you no, know, the one we pray to, he is our big brother, he is our example, then we need to follow his example. And if he shuts the enemy down a certain way, we need to take heed. And how does he shut him down? He shuts him down by telling him the truth, right? And I used to think that I could like ignore the enemy or, you know, change my thought on something different to something different and just kind of keep it moving. But let me tell you, that does not work. It does not work. Don't try it. It does not work. If you have tried it, you know what I'm telling you is the truth. The only way to shut the enemy down is to declare the truth in response to him. We don't dialogue with the enemy. We don't have a discussion with the enemy. There's nowhere in the word where Jesus was like, well, let me ask you what you think about. Mm -mm. He didn't do all that. And, you know, the enemy has been around. The devil has been around for thousands of years. We've been around for a couple of decades. He can, he is cunning. He can outwit us. He can outthink us. He can outreason us. And in the natural, we can't do that with him. We got to rely on something bigger, better, stronger, and more powerful. And that is the truth, the word of God. And that's exactly what we see Jesus doing every single time the enemy came. He didn't have a dialogue with him. He just spoke the truth over him and basically keep it kept it moving, you know? He's like, no, I'm not even receiving that. We're not even talking about this. The truth is X, Y, Z, and A, B, C. And there are a couple of different examples in Luke 4 um, where Jesus shows us how he dealt with the enemy. And so if the son of God, if um, you know the most powerful man that walked the earth did this, then we need to do it too. Because he's showing us by example how to successfully walk through seasons like this, seasons of isolation, seasons of wilderness. And so don't ignore the enemy. Don't try to change your thought or whatever. Shut it down by telling him the truth. Okay, the next point is knowing the areas that he will try to test you. You know, the Bible says that the um, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are the three areas where we are tested and that Jesus, we can see Jesus tested, right? And so talks about the lust of the flesh, anything that our body craves, whether or not it's food, that's why fasting is so difficult. Um, anything that the body craves, um, uh, even the lust of the eyes, anything that we see that we covet or that we want or, you know, that's money or anything like that, you know. Um, and then the pride of life, you know, the enemy would try to always get us to exalt ourselves because that is exactly what landed him in hell. That is exactly what separated him for all eternity from God. That is what he did to make sure that he kept a barrier between he and God. And so don't be surprised when these areas are touched on or when they're tested. Maybe you're dealing with something that 
in one of these areas that you've been really struggling with. You know, maybe it's food, you know, but the, God will allow that thing to be kind of like uh, irritated during this season because he does not want anything to capture your attention more than him. He wants your spirit to lead you, not your flesh. He wants to be the one who has the absolute influence in your life. He wants to be the one who has the main, the first, the preeminent influence in your life. And so all of those things can sometimes derail us, get us off. But again, we can see in the word of God how Jesus dealt with it, you know? And so if you're dealing with anything, don't be surprised. During that season, God might allow the enemy to touch on those things. You know, that's exactly what happened with Job when he was kind of going through his situation or whatnot. God had to challenge Job <clears throat> when he was going through his isolation and wilderness period. And during that season or whatnot, he basically had to check Job. I've been through seasons like this where I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to deal with in this season? Is there anything I need to deal with? Lord, show me. Help me, Lord, to work that thing out through your grace and through your your power so that I can be on get on the other side of that thing. So that thing does not have a hold on me. And so be prepared when you're in that season to be tested with you know the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Finally, the last thing that you want to make sure that you're doing in this season is obey the still small voice of the Lord. Or even if you don't, if you're not one who um, typically gets um, uh, direction from the Lord or hears the Lord audibly or in your heart or, you know, with words or whatever, follow the unction of the Lord. Follow the leading of the Lord. If you feel like you're supposed to do something, follow it. Just do it. Just do it. Because here's the deal. The more you do what God tells you to do, the more that you're leaning in to listen to any direction and the more that you actually follow that direction, the greater the credibility that you're building with the Lord. In the natural, you know, we we will give, we will entrust people with valuables that, you know, we might have or whatever. Maybe it's the keys to our house or maybe it's, you know, a car um, or whatever. We will entrust them to have access to that thing when they have built a level of credibility, right? A level of history that they can be trusted, that they're not going to um, take advantage, that they are trustworthy, that they are going to respect your possessions and all of that stuff, you know, but we don't do that for the average person on the street. We're not just going to hand them our keys to our house or hand them uh, or give them our car or whatever to use for a month or whatnot. And we don't know anything about them. Well, it's the same thing with the Lord. When we're in seasons like this and he's testing us and he is like pulling out of us things that need to be pulled out and we're not leaning in to kind of like, okay, Lord, what do I do with this? Or what do I do with that? Or how do I navigate this? Then you're not building the credibility to increase his trust in you, right? And so who do people trust? People who they know have a history of being trustworthy. So my main thing is that at all costs, at any cost, try to be that person who is trustworthy to the Lord, you know, who God can trust you because the more he trusts you, the more he gives you, the more he gives you, the more he will continue to give you, you know, as you build in him. And so you guys, if this was helpful at any level, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to be notified the next time I release a video, make sure you hit that bell and I will see you guys on the next video. And I just bless you with success in overcoming, growing in God, growing in Christ. So you guys, I will see you on the next video. Bye.